Good morning. And a very warm welcome to worship today, whether you're visiting or here often, whether you're listening later online, everyone is welcome here. As you hear, we don't have Roddy with us today at the organ, but we do have our very own Donald Goskirk, and isn't it beautiful? Um, <laughs> You were all much quieter today <laughs> as you were listening. Um, so, um, yeah, between Donald and myself we're, and the choir, of course, um, we'll, we'll lead you in worship today. Um, just some notices to share with you. Um, here we are. So there's tea and coffee after the service today. Um, the women's group have very kindly arranged that. Um, we hope that you'll be able to stay and enjoy that hospitality and each other's company. Um, the subscription for Life and Work, that's a Church of Scotland magazine, is due, and Margaret's hoping that you'll cross her palm with silver. Um, the details are on the service sheet there. Margaret's also asking about the care home rota because we need some new people to take part. Where is Margaret? Oh, she's not here, okay. All right, I was going to ask her to give us a wave, so that, but there we go. Um, so you can contact myself or Margaret about that one if you feel you'd like to join Arota um, and help every now and then in whatever way with the services. Um, dates for the diary, there's a soup and sweet lunch on the 20th of November in the West Church Hall in aid of Christian Aid. And there's a little plea there for help or to come along. Um, and the social committee is inviting you to a quiz night on the 11th of November. That will soon be here, won't it? Um, and again in the West Church Hall. And you can come along on your own. You don't have to be in a team to come along to that one. Just come. And lastly, Natara Nosh is tomorrow at 12.30 in the West Church Hall. And you're being asked to wear your thermals because the boiler's broken. <laughs> <laughs> so wear lots of layers, but come anyway and enjoy the company and, of course, the good food. Um, and I think these are all the notices. Um, and because we don't have a choir in Detroit today, we're going to sing a gathering song, which is number 567. Focus my eyes on you, O Lord. Focus my eyes on you. It's number 567. It is written in scripture, I am an open book to you, even from a distance you know what I'm thinking. You know when I leave and when I get back, I'm never out of your sight. You know everything I'm going to say before I start the first sentence. I look behind me and you're there, then up ahead and you're there too. 
your reassuring presence coming and going. This is too much, too wonderful. I can't take it all in. Let us pray. Here we are to worship you. Here we are to worship you, Lord, who knows us through and through. Here we are to worship you, who has us always in sight, in mind, in heart. Lord, accept our honest praise. It's how we honor you. And help us to feel your reassuring presence, to keep you in sight, in mind, in heart, in all our coming and going, and in this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let's sing again. It's number um, 198. Let us build a house where love can dwell. And today we're leaving out um, verse 3. Leaving out verse 3 of hymn 198.
go on worshipping in our prayers and we say together the Lord's Prayer, which is on the back of the service sheet. Let us pray. Loving God, we are glad to be here to bless you. For though we do not always listen or understand, you bless us in ways far too many to count. Leaves falling playfully to the pavement, a path burning orange and raucous red to remind us that there is beauty in every season of our lives. Wild geese flying in great V's across light streaked skies to remind us that our journey However fragile the faith by which we travel is a journey home. Loving God, we are glad to be here to bless you. For though we do not always listen or understand, you bless us in ways beyond our imagining. The child tugging the hem of our jacket to remind us where our gaze should be the stranger tugging the frayed edges of our conscience to remind us we are all broken and in need of one another's care. Forgive us, loving God, the times we fail to notice your blessing all around us. Forgive us, Lord, for overcomplicating everything, for forgetting the heart of it all, that life is for loving and love is for sharing with each and with all. Lord, forgive us the things we've said, thought and done which left others feeling far from blessed. Forgive us, loving God, all we have left unsaid, unthought and undone which might have opened eyes and ears to your eagerness to bless. Loving God, we are glad to be here to bless you. For though we do not always listen or understand, you bless us in ways far beyond our deserving. And we do, heart, mind and soul, we do. Through Jesus Christ, who made flesh your blessing. And we pray as Jesus taught his friends once when they asked him how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is a kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. So who likes balloons here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the co-op didn't have any balloons. I only had a couple and um, I'm going to use one of them. Um, but I couldn't find any across the road. Um, so, a little customer complaint there in case anyone's listening. <laughs> Have I told you of the research about balloons and babies? It's the only thing I remember from in-service training as a teacher. Um, there was an experiment of babies and the things that make them smile. And baby girls most often smile at a human face. And baby boys, <laughs> a balloon, apparently. <laughs> I'm not making any conclusions there, okay? It's just the research. <laughs> so this is a story of a wee boy um, who had an enormous box of sweets. Um, and for the people that are listening on the telephone line later, every time the wee boy says, I'm not sharing, I'm going to blow a bit of air into the balloon, okay? So it's the story of this wee boy who sat with an enormous great big box of sweets and he's trying to decide what to do, except he thinks they're probably all for him. That's what he said. <sighs> all singing and dancing today, eh? 
I'm not sharing my sweets with girls, he says. They're smelly. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sharing my sweets with my teachers, he decides. They are bossy. <laughs> Sorry, teachers. I'm not sharing my sweets with my mum. She's obsessed with the laundry basket. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> I'm not sharing my sweeties with my pals, he said. There'll be none left for me. <laughs> Which is when a wee girl, one of the wee teeny tiny people, passes by with a really small bar of chocolate. And she looks at the boy and she says, would you like a bit? And the boy looks at his box of sweeties. And he thinks about girls, well, they're only a little bit smelly. <laughs> and he thinks about teachers and how they know some really cool stuff. And he thinks about his mum, who always knows when he wants to play and when he wants to just sit quietly. And he thinks of his pals and all the games and the secrets that they share. And the bit of him which thinks he deserves to have all the sweets goes over the hill <laughs> and far away. And he thinks of the girl with her wee bar of chocolate and he shouts it over and says, here, have two. Every now and then, someone comes along and surprises us. Every now and then someone comes and surprises us with their kindness. And their kindness is a question about who we are and how we see others. We'll hear an echo of that thought as we listen to today's, to today's story from Luke's Gospel. But for now we're going to sing hymn 559. There is a Redeemer, hymn 559.
This morning's reading is taken from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10, and this can be found on page 104 of the New Testament section of the Pew Bible. Jesus and Zacchaeus. Jesus went on into Jericho and was passing through. There was a chief tax collector there named Zacchaeus, who was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but he was a little man and could not see Jesus because of the crowd. So he ran ahead of the crowd and climbed a sycamore tree to see Jesus, who was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to that place, he looked up and said to Zacchaeus, Hurry down, Zacchaeus, because I must stay in your house today. Zacchaeus hurried down and welcomed him with great joy. All the people who saw it started grumbling. This man has gone as a guest to the home of a sinner. Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Listen, sir, I will give half my belongings to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone, I will pay back four times as much. Jesus said to him, Salvation has come to this house today, for this man also is a descendant of Abraham. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Liz. So this is not in the service sheet, um, but we're going to listen to another story. Um, But first, Zacchaeus hurried down and was happy to welcome him. It says, what would you do if it was you? (laughs) What would you do if Jesus shouted up to you and said, hurry up and come down, I'm coming to your house, put the kettle on. I think I'd say fantastic, but let me go ahead. (laughs) Sweep the living room for dirty socks and check the fridge and unclear the the guest bedroom. But Zacchaeus hurried down and was happy to help to welcome him. So this story that you're about to hear is called If Jesus Came to My House. And it's a story that is 98 years young. It was written by a lady called Joan Gail Thomas in 1924. Um, And there's a a kind of animation of it, which I'll put on the Facebook page later on for any that want to have a look. Um, So keep on listening for the gospel in If Jesus Came to My House. If Jesus came to my house and knocked upon the door, I'm sure I'd be more happy than I've ever been before. If Jesus came to my house, I'd like him best to be about the age that I am and about the height of me. I'd run downstairs to meet him, the door I'd open wide, and I would say to Jesus, oh, won't you come inside? I'd offer him my rocking chair, it's such a comfy seat and at the pleasant fireplace he'd warm his little feet. My kitten and my puppy dog would sit beside his chair and they would be as pleased as I at seeing Jesus there. Then I would put the kettle on to make a cup of tea and we would be as happy and as friendly as could be. I'd show him all the places that are nicest in the house, the hole behind the stairs where I pretend that I'm a mouse the little window up above where I can stand and see the people passing down below, and yet they can't see me. And then I think I'd show him the corner in the hall where I'm sometimes rather frightened by the shadows on the wall. I always have to hurry when I'm going past at night, but hand in hand with Jesus, I'd be perfectly all right. I'd show him round the garden and ask him please to bless the seeds that I have planted, the peas and watercress. 
And if the flowers I'd planted were blooming on that day, I'd pick a bunch of all the best for him to take away. Then while he held the basket, I would gather two or three of the ripest rosy apples from my special apple tree. And all the little birds would come and twitter up above for joy at seeing Jesus in the garden that they loved. And then we'd play all with my toys, my nicest toys, of course. And he should have the longest ride upon my rocking horse. And with my bricks, I'd build for him a palace of his own. And he should be the little king and sit upon the throne. And when we'd done, we'd stack the toys all neatly on the shelf. But first, I'd let him choose the best and keep them for himself. And when at last the day was done and shadows crossed the sky, I'd see him to the garden gate and there we'd say goodbye. And he'd perhaps say, thank you for a lovely afternoon. And I would say, I do so hope you'll come back very soon. And then he'd smile and wave goodbye. And so would end our day. But all the house would seem to smile because he'd been our way. I know the little Jesus can never call on me in the way that I've imagined, like coming in to tea. But I can go to his house and kneel and say a prayer. And I can sing and worship him and talk with him in there. And though he may not occupy my cozy rocking chair, a lot of other people would be happy sitting there. And I can make him welcome, as he himself has said, by doing all I would for him for other folk instead. And though the house is dark at night with shadows on the wall, I never need be frightened when I'm going through the hall. And although I cannot see him, I still can feel him near to understand and hold my hand and drive away my fear. The flowers in my garden he may not pick himself, but someone else would like them upon his mantel shelf. So if I know of anyone who is old or ill or sad, I'll take them there for Jesus' sake and help to make them glad. I still can share with Jesus the nicest of my toys by lending them or giving them to poorer girls and boys. And though he may not visit me as I have wished he would, yet even so, he'll bless my house if I am kind and good. you were able to hear that all right. I know the, that music underneath speech is not always good for everyone, but I'll put it on the Facebook page later as well. And thank you to Stephen for enabling that today. It's the story of a little boy who imagines Jesus coming to him like him. He's also a wee boy and he gives him his best cheer and says, you can take one of my toys. I don't mind which one. And he walks him around the garden and so on. And then he realizes, that, well, okay, if Jesus comes to my house, he won't ever come as a wee boy, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> he decides. And then he says, well, actually, there are other boys and girls that I can welcome and I can share my toys with and pick flowers for. And when I do that, I'll be doing it for Jesus. Let's go on worshiping in our prayers. He went out one door to come in another to check the sound. <laughs> and it chose that moment to do that. <laughs> You're all right, okay. Let's go on worshiping in our prayers for ourselves and others. Let's pray. Lord, we wonder what took Zacchaeus up that tree. Was it curiosity? Boredom? Something someone said? 
Did he have a sense there might be more to life than counting coins and stacking coffers? We wonder what he showed you, Lord, when he took you home. Were you how he imagined? Did he thrust a gift in your hand when you made to leave? Take it, take whatever you want. Did he ever see his home the same way again? Or always imagine you sat in that chair, tucking into that dish, laughing at that joke? Living, Lord, there are many who crave your company today. They may not realize what or who they yearn for, but it's surely you, Lord. But what if we don't know how lost we were until we are found? And so we pray, Lord, come to us, each and all, for we all have need. Make yourself at home in our lives. Lord, make a shelter of our hearts and we will wait on you always. Living God concerned for each and every one of us. We pray today for a world sore and afraid. We think of people near and far whose burden we bear in prayer to you now. We pray for people in South Korea, for those who've lost children and grandchildren, siblings and friends, for those who will live forever with the memory of those moments. So many young people for whom celebrations have turned to tragedy. We pray for Ukraine still, for families huddling in hallways away from windows, for older folk alone in the blackouts wondering when it will end, for soldiers and civilians ordered or drawn into fighting. Lord, we pray for Iran too, for those defying so-called morality police, those courageous enough to take to the streets in protest, naming violence against women for what it is. For women around the world, cutting their hair, demonstrating solidarity and demanding equality. For all these, Lord, we pray peace and healing and grace and humanity as each has need. We think also of the world and the disasters, natural and human made, which have caused such damage in these days. For the people of the Philippines, already challenged in so many ways and dealing now with storm and flood and landslide. For those trapped and waiting for help. For those carrying little ones and whatever they can manage, wading through waist-deep waters. May help come, Lord, and let it be soon. And we pray for those involved in the rescue effort. May there be folk to care for them when they are exhausted and when they lie awake their minds awash with what they've seen. Lord, we want to pray too for those known to us whose lives feel to have come undone in some way. And if we are those people, then we pray for ourselves as well. In the safety of this company, in the quiet of this place, in the shelter of our hearts, we lift our prayers to you.
Lord, for all whom we have prayed today, we ask the knowledge of your company, your care, your compassion for the world's sake and for your glory. Amen. I'm going to sing again, and this time it's him. 726, when we are living, we are in the Lord, hymn 726. A little girl came home from school with a drawing she'd made in class. She danced into the kitchen. Mummy, look what I've made. Her mum was making dinner. Guess what, she squealed, waving the drawing. Her mum never looked up and said, what? Tending to the pots. Guess what, the child repeated, waving the drawing. What, the mother said, tending the plates. Mum, the child said. You're not listening. Sweetie, yes, I'm listening. Mum, the child said. You're not listening with your eyes. It's easy when we're busy to miss important moments, important people. I fear I do. We can get caught up in a job, but sometimes the interruption, or more importantly, the interrupter, proves to be the real task in hand. And the original job 
in that moment a distraction. Whatever Jesus was doing that day, whatever he was going, whoever he was with, it all changed when he caught sight of that man in the tree. Jesus was good at that. To borrow that little girl's words, he was good at listening with his eyes as well as his ears. Jesus had a knack for noticing where others looked right past. And more than that, for affirming where others would mock and make fun of. Think of that other tax collector. Matthew was his name. Sitting, counting his money in the shade of his booth when he feels himself being watched. Matthew looks up to see the carpenter from Nazareth, to hear him calling, follow me. And he gets up and leaves his money, leaves everything for the man who noticed him and saw his heart. Or think of the woman in the synagogue bent over, looking down, always looking down. Between her and Jesus, a sea of men, men doing their level best to ignore her. But Jesus cannot. He calls her. Come to me. And lifting her face, or so I imagine, says, Woman, you are free. Yes, it is true, you are free. And the woman goes away dancing and singing to God and looking up at last. Or think of the visually impaired man who in Luke's narrative is the last before Zacchaeus to meet Jesus. The man hears a commotion and he asks, what's going on? Who is it? Tell me, who's here? Realizing, he begins to shout to Jesus to help him, which triggers those with Jesus to try to shut him up and shoo him away. But Jesus stops in his tracks. What is it, friend? What do you want me to do for you? Go. Your faith has made you well. Immediately the man's sight is restored and he begins praising God. Everyone there praises God. But in my imagination, the man's voice is the one that Jesus hears. And today, a little further along the road, Zacchaeus. Not just a tax collector, but a chief tax collector. Whereas the tax collectors were out collecting tariffs on behalf of the Roman occupiers, Zacchaeus was responsible for dishing out their contracts and ensuring he would get a sufficient skim of the cash himself. Nobody else saw Zacchaeus. Why would they want to? Betraying his own folk, likely taking a little extra for his pocket when everyone knew he had enough already. Nobody saw Zacchaeus, except Jesus. Zacchaeus, he says, he knows his name. Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, I'm coming home with you today. And while everyone grumbled at Jesus' choice of host, Zacchaeus stood there, his heart in his mouth. I don't need it anymore, he said. I'll give half of it away. And if I ask too much sometimes, then I'll give more than I took. Zacchaeus may never have known before how lost he was underneath. But here he was, found for sure. All of this makes me wonder about the life we share and whether we're seeing as we should All of this makes me wonder, do we have Jesus' knack for noticing and for affirming who is in front of us? Isn't that what we're made for? What we're called to? You and I? Zacchaeus, hurry up and come down. It's you I want to be with. It's your table I want to sit at. It's your stories I want to hear. Zacchaeus, it's your heart I want to hold. 
perhaps, perhaps there's someone who needs you to notice them today, to hear you say, but I want to be with you today. If ever you read Luke's gospel in a concentrated way, you'll notice a lot of things happen today. I want to come to your house today. Salvation has come to this house today. So don't wait. Go and do as Jesus does. The world is waiting today. Let's pray. Lord, we give our offering gladly today. And we pray it be for another's good. Lord, we give ourselves today. And we pray for eyes and ears to see as we should. Lord, we give all we are together to you today. Save us from distraction. Keep us from being idle. Make our hearts as open as this cathedral's doors and we will live as you live and love as you love for the kingdom's sake today. Amen. So the last word in our service is always amen and it's usually sung um, but I've forgotten to look up the number. <laughs> so today instead of singing our amen can we just say a great big amen when it gets to that bit of the service is that all right? <laughs> so I just realized as I was praying there. Um, so we're going to finish worship today with him 251. I'm going to leave by the Oh, no, I'm going to stay for tea today. I'm not going to leave by the door. I'm going to stay for tea today, and I hope you all will, if you can. Um, but for now, we're going to sing hymn 251, and then the blessing, and then a big hearty amen. <laughs>
but then to love and to serve the Lord, the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Spirit is with you for now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.